Now let's see where I'm at on my tutorial. Let's go down now to um, 10. Next I'm going to make this background layer a color. It's currently white and I want to make it white. That's what I want to make it. Uh, so we're going to make it another color and then, and then turn it back to white. If you see this little lock on the layer, it indicates that this layer is locked and you can't make any changes to it. And since we want to make some changes to it, double click on the layer and you could name the layer if you want, but it comes up with a default name of layer 0 and that's always fine for me. So I'm going to click OK and you can see the little lock went away. Now I'm going to be able to make changes and edit this layer. This here is the foreground and the background colors. And currently mine is set to this black and some in a light blue. If you double click on the foreground color or the background color if you want to change it, the color picker comes up. And let's say I wanted to choose a green and I'll do there there's another tutorial on how to use this color picker in more detail. <laughs> but basically you choose a color and click OK and you'll see that your color picker changes to the color you've chosen. Now I wanted to look at my tutorial to make sure I'm teaching you the same way uh, I taught you on the on the written tutorial. Go to the paint bucket tool and you'll see my cursor now changes to a little paint bucket. Make sure you're on the correct layer. Make the background layer as your active layer. And just click once out on the desktop and everything turns to green, which is my foreground color. Now, the easiest way to change this from black to white is to hit D on the keyboard and you'll see my foreground and background color immediately change from to black and white <coughs> but I want white to be the foreground color so you can exchange these two colors quickly by just hitting X on the keyboard and now you'll see that my foreground color is white again with my paint bucket tool as the active tool and my background layer as the active background layer and I'm going to click out there again on the desktop and it's going to <coughs> make my background white. Let's um, break this at, and uh, we'll move on to a, another video for part three. Hey everyone, um, on to part three of my first layout tutorial. Um, I wanted to take a moment to apologize for all the coughing and sneezing I'm doing. I'm not sick at all. I just think it's a Murphy's Law that that I cough when I make these videos. We are going to pick up with paragraph 11 if you are following along on the written uh, tutorial. Um, we're going to do some playing in the layers palette so we can learn more about how it works. Once you understand the layers palette, everything just seems so much easier. So uh, let's take some time to play. I really like to play, don't you? Uh, sometimes things over here on the desktop uh, disappear and people really panic. And I'm going to show you why that, that happens. Over here on the layers palette, this area here is the layers palette. <coughs> we um, are going to first learn how to move the layers around. If you hold down with your mouse on a layer, click down with the uh, left uh, on button on the, on the mouse and hold down and drag up, you'll see that now my background layer is above my two photo layers. And what's happened is I can't see my photos anymore and and out here on the desktop that that panics people. 
until they understand that they're actually still there. They're over here in the layers palette. You can see them over in the layers palette. It's just that this paper layer is so big that it covers up everything underneath it. It's like a stack of books. If you're looking down on a stack of books and the top book <coughs> is larger than all the books underneath it, you're not going to see the books underneath it. Let's take a moment now to learn about uh, invisibility. Right here on the layers palette <coughs> are these little eyes and you can make a layer visible or invisible just by clicking on it. So I'm going to click on the eye on the paper layer and you can see it's now invisible and I can see my two photos again. So go ahead and turn that off and on a few times to observe how it works. If you want, turn some of the photo ones off and on to see how it works. <coughs> let's, um, let's get back to work. I'm going to move my background layer back down I'm going to make it visible again. Let's make a mat behind my photo. I'm going to make this second photo invisible because it doesn't really follow along with the tutorial. I kind of brought that in. It doesn't follow along with the written tutorial, so I'm going to make it invisible for right now. To make the mat, I'm going to hit this little icon to create a new blank layer. Now you can see a new layer showed up right above the layer that I was active. Well, let me hit the undo button and show you again. This layer is the active layer. So when I hit the new layer button, the, the new layer is going to be right above this layer. If I wanted it on the very top, I'd make this the active layer and then the new layer is going to be above <coughs> that photo. But I want to show you as uh, following along in the written tutorial. Go to the rectangular marquee tool and make a selection. Get those marching ants a little bit larger than your photo because we want the mat to be larger than the photo. I'm going to choose a color for my foreground as we learned before. Let's ma make that a little darker. And I'm going to go, there are several ways to do this. You could just fill this with the bucket paint bucket tool by clicking out there. But I'm going to show you there's always uh, many ways to do the same thing. F under the Edit drop down menu, go to Fill Selection, and I'm going to use the foreground color that I chose. Click OK, and you can see that the area was filled in of my selection. Now I can hit Control D on the keyboard to get rid of the marching ants, or you can go to the Select drop-down menu and just choose Deselect. Now I'm going to drag my mat layer below my photo layer in the Layers palette, <coughs> and you can see I can resize it if I think my mat is too large. By grabbing the squares on the bounding box. 